Hi students, and welcome to today's lesson. I'm Mr. Hunter. Today, we will investigate the question, how can wind affect land? Are you ready? Grab your pencil and your science journal, and let's get started. Whoa, look at this picture. That statue is huge. What do you notice about the statue in this picture? The statue looks like it's made of rock. The statue's face looks human, but it has paws like an animal. Have you seen a picture of the statue before? This picture shows a giant statue called the Great Sphinx of Giza. The Sphinx is located near Cairo in Egypt. A long time ago, people carved the Sphinx out of limestone. Look at these two pictures of the Sphinx. What do you notice? How does the Sphinx in this picture compare with the Sphinx in the other picture? I notice that the Sphinx in the first picture looks like it has sunk down into sand. I can only see its head and back. The Sphinx looks like it is buried, but the Sphinx is not buried in the other picture. This picture was taken in 1857, more than 100 years before the other picture. As you look at these two pictures, what questions do you have about the Sphinx? I wonder, how did the Sphinx get buried and then unburied? I wonder how long the Sphinx was buried. Hmm, how can we start to answer these questions? I have an idea. Let's read this book to answer some of our questions about how the Sphinx appearance changed over time. While I read, listen for evidence that can answer this question. What happened to the Sphinx between 1857 and the present day? We will look for evidence in the pictures and the text. Ready to read? The Giza complex is on the bank of the Nile. It is a group of very old monuments. They sit uphill from the river bend. Hidden in the sand, a sphinx is a mix. This one has the body of a lion with the head of a man. It is crafted from limestone. It stares at the sunrise in the east. No one can tell when it was made. Some think it is 4,500 years old. For a long time, sand hid the Sphinx up to the neck. This kept it safe. Over time, people came to explore. They dug out the front legs, but they could not finish the job. What was hidden by all that sand? More people kept on lifting out sand. What they dug out was shocking. It was 240 feet long and as tall as a six-story building. There was nothing like it in the world. No one can tell why the Sphinx was made. People study it for hints about its history. Whoa, this picture is awesome. Let's look more closely at it. This drawing is a scale drawing. The pink line represents a ruler that measures the Sphinx's height. About how many feet up from the bottom of the Sphinx was the sand? The sand was about 40 feet from the bottom of the Sphinx up to its neck. What do we learn about the Sphinx that might explain what happened to it? We learned that sand hid the Sphinx for a long time. Eventually, people dug out the sand that covered the Sphinx. People had to remove a huge amount of sand to uncover the Sphinx. This information makes me think about how land can change. What do you think might have caused so much sand to bury the Sphinx? Well, people can move sand, but I don't think people would bury the Sphinx on purpose. 
We also know that water can change land, so maybe water brought the sand to the Sphinx. But wait a second. The Sphinx is in the middle of a desert. Deserts are very dry, so water probably didn't move the sand. Hmm. Could wind have moved the sand? I have seen wind blow sand around on a windy day. Do you think wind could have buried the Sphinx? Some scientists think that wind changed the land around the Sphinx and caused the sand to bury the Sphinx. What do you think? Can wind affect land? Hmm. I think we can start to make a claim based on this explanation. What claim can we start with? Let's start with the claim that wind can change land. Now what do we need to do next? We need strong evidence to support our claim. I wonder, how can we gather evidence to support our claim that wind can change land? I know, let's investigate. How should we start our investigation? Let's make a wind model. I have some materials here to use in our model. The first item I have is a balloon pump. Do you know what a balloon pump is? A balloon pump is a tool that pushes out air to pump up a balloon. What do you think the balloon pump can help us with in our model? Yes, we can use the balloon pump to create a burst of moving air. This moving air can represent wind. We also have three land materials that I put into bins. The land materials are sand, gravel, and soil. Let's use these materials to represent the land around the Sphinx. Before we start, we need to make a step-by-step -step plan for our investigation. We call this plan a procedure. Why do you think it is important for us to develop a procedure before we begin an investigation? Well, we need to know how to use the materials to help us find evidence to support our claim. Wind can change land. What will we do first? Well, remember, we want to explore how wind changes the land materials in our model. So let's start by observing the land materials before we add the wind. We can write, observe the land materials on our procedure sheet. What will we do next? Hmm, we can use the pump to make wind. But if the bin is open, our land materials might fly out of the bin. That would be a huge mess. We need to find a way to keep the land material inside of the bin. How do you think we should do that? Yes, let's cover the bin with something. Hmm, how about plastic wrap? Great idea. Let's write, cover the bin with plastic wrap on our procedure sheet. Next, we can use our balloon pump to make wind. But remember, we have plastic wrap covering the bin. So how will we pump air into the bin? Hmm, what do you think? I think we will need to drill a hole in the side of the bin. Then we can insert the tip of the balloon pump into the hole. Then we will pump air into the bin 25 to 30 times to create a burst of moving air that represents wind. Let's add this step to our procedure sheet. Wow, we have a great start to our procedures. What do you think we need to do for our final step? Yes, we will need to observe the land materials to see if there was any change. Let's add this final step to our procedure sheet. We have a great plan to investigate whether wind can change the land. I'm sure our investigation will help us figure out what happened to the Sphinx. 
I can't wait to investigate with you next time. Let's review your task for today. Use evidence from the model to support a claim. Thanks for joining me on today's journey as we planned an investigation to explore how wind and land interact. Your task for today is to complete Lesson 10 Science Journal. I'll see you next time.